Ah, glorious 800 by 600 resolution. It's something you have to get used to if you want to use older integrated graphics in 2024. It's easy to get caught up with how far modern iGPUs have come, so today we've taken it back a few years and we'll be looking at the HD630 iGPU found inside the i7-7700K. But first, Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the HD630 graphics aren't to be confused with the UHD630 graphics found inside 8th and 9th gen Intel processors. I don't think they're actually that much different. Both are going to struggle these days, but thankfully even the older HD630 graphics support DX12, so most games should run, they're just not going to run all that well. Our first game, Fallout 4 here at 720p with the lowest settings, runs with FXAA enabled as well for an average of 43 FPS, a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 12. Running around the Cambridge area here and it's clear to see there are certainly a few problems. But Fallout 4 has definitely seen a resurgence in popularity recently and it's nice to know that you can run it on older hardware. So if you want to get back into this or experience it for the first time and you have a not so great system, then fear not because it will run and it's not completely awful. The footage you saw at the start was from Kingdom Come Deliverance, which will actually go down to about 240p with the graphical options thanks to the Intel drivers. I don't usually get an option for 240p, so it was nice to see it here. I did select it, but it was impossible to see anything, and it wasn't really necessary when 800 by 600 will do the job at the lowest settings. 35 FPS in and around Ratai and the surrounding areas. 25 was that 1% low and the 0.1% low was also 25. So yeah, very consistent surprisingly and I'm very happy with this result even if it is looking a bit like a PlayStation 2 game. The Witcher 3 up next, 1024 by 768 is the lowest we could go, but this simply wasn't enough and we were stuck with less than 25 FPS. The percentile lows also suffered quite a bit, coming in at 7 and 6, so it was quite consistent, just consistently bad. I suppose we could go into the INI file and adjust a few things, but we're probably not going to see that many gains to be fair. Counter-Strike 2 is certainly more demanding than its predecessor, but it can still be made to run on lower end hardware. We also get the option for 480p if we want to, and I think there was even an option for 240p, which isn't usually there. For some reason, I installed the latest drivers that this uh, HD630 supports, and we were getting lower resolution graphical options in the menus, uh, so maybe I'll have to try them out, but again, just like in Kingdom Come, it wasn't necessary, and 800 by 600 with the lowest settings was just fine for at least 60 FPS here. 76, in fact, was that average. The 1 and 0.1% lows weren't too bad either at 40 and 31. And although I'm certainly far from the best CS2 player in the world, I was able to remain somewhat competitive, even if it's not that pretty to look at. Now I don't know how this happened, but Baldur's Gate 3 also ran, albeit with FSR performance mode at 1024 by 768 Now to access this lower than 720p resolution, we do have to set the aspect ratio to 4.3 within the graphical menu. 24 FPS wasn't brilliant, but it doesn't feel as bad in this game as it would say in a first person shooter. So sort of playable considering the graphics we're working with here. And although there are some big dips and drops in and around the city. All in all, it's not too bad. Not sure why there's a sort of yellow tint over the screen. I don't know if I enabled some sort of colorblind option accidentally. I don't think I did, and I've never seen this before. So yeah, not really sure what's going on. Probably driver related. Minecraft, of course, has absolutely no problems. 1080p, in fact, was doable here with the default fancy graphics, so we're not even running at the lowest options here. We actually got over 200 frames per second on average. Those percentile figures do leave a little to be desired, but if you have a 7700K HD630 graphics and you want to play a bit of Minecraft, you certainly can do so. I think this average was a bit higher because I spent a lot of my gameplay looking down at the ground and building, um, so as you're exploring a little bit more, you may start to see a lower average overall. 
It depends what you're doing in the game, really. Now, perhaps one of the most surprising results of the day, along with Baldur's Gate 3, was Helldivers 2. This supports 640 by 480 no matter the graphics card, and at the lowest settings we saw 25 frames per second. I apologise that the footage is a bit dark here, I just so happen to record a mission taking place at night, but uh, yeah hopefully you can see everything okay. We could also enable uh, some form of upscaling, but that's going to make things absolutely impossible to see, so I think we'll leave that option turned off. Anyway. It wasn't too bad here, 25 FPS with a 1% low of 22 and a 0.1% low of 16. That said, the graphics card I've decided to pair with this can't arrive quick enough. GTA 5 now, I'm sure we could probably squeeze at least 30 FPS from this one at 1080p, but 720p is your best bet. That along with the lowest settings and all the advanced options disabled as well. Here we saw 53 FPS with a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 34. Not too shabby considering the specs we're working with, but the CPU of course does a lot of the heavy lifting. Red Dead Redemption 2 also ran somehow at 25 FPS, albeit with 720p, the lowest settings, and 50% rest scale, so 360p. While it did start and play for a while, it wasn't long before the game crashed, and I couldn't really get more than 20 seconds of gameplay from this chip. That's going to take you a long time to complete the story, to be fair, if you're crashing every 20 seconds, so I wouldn't advise attempting it. Finally we have Fortnite, another example of a game that runs pretty well on the HD 630, 1080p with performance mode and the lowest options once again with 50% resolution scale. 79 FPS all in all, there were certainly a few dips and drops, the uh, percentile lows make that pretty clear, but it is playable if you're desperate though, performance mode is advisable. Now I took this 7700K out of an eBay build and I do plan to pair it with a graphics card in order to see what an older high-end chip is capable of these days. I'm looking forward to making that video because I've not had much experience with a 7700K before. It has four cores and eight threads so it may struggle a little in certain games but hopefully we'll give it a bit of an overclock as well and maybe then see if we can push it to five gigahertz in another video. I'm also interested to go back and test a couple of the games, Helldivers 2, Kingdom Come Deliverance and maybe CS2 at lower resolutions. Uh, Helldivers and CS2 particularly, I want to see if we can enable FSR at like 480p as well or 240p just to see how bad that's going to look and whether or not we can hit at least 30 FPS with the iGPU. Yeah, maybe I'll have a separate video for that coming soon. As for this one then, I know we've taken a look at a lot of integrated graphics solutions, but most of those have been fairly modern and I thought I'd go back a few years today to see how things are holding up here. And it's a mixed bag of results with a few surprising ones thrown in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.